Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here with the C47 and another episode of Gearbox. Uh, it's been a while and I have now recovered both mentally and physically from NAB. It's sort of a three or four week prep before the show, uh, one week at the show, and then it usually takes the better part of a week to become a human being again. I try to get it done in about four or five days, uh, but it doesn't usually work. So I'm just coming out of it, actually came out of it a couple of days ago, woke up this morning and said, you know, I really need to uh, do an episode of Gearbox and go over some stuff with you guys. I was on the phone with Rode last night talking about some things and I decided to talk a little bit about audio today just because uh, it's fresh on my mind. I also did an audio for small productions uh, session at NAB. I'll be doing one at Postapalooza this year. And, uh, and so I thought I'd talk to you guys about working with audio in smaller camera systems and not everything. I'm not talking about using uh, professional shotgun microphones and things like that, but just some of the stuff uh, to be thinking about when you're recording audio and uh, one piece of kit in particular that I use uh, or at least have in my bag all of the time when I'm doing stuff. And that piece of kit, by the way, is the microphone I'm recording to right now, which is the Rode VideoMic Pro. Uh, this is not an episode about it being a pretty picture. In fact, I've kind of jerry-rigged this one so that there are certain things that are in frame and other things that are not. You probably can hear right now air planes going by you can definitely pick up those cars that are passing uh, so I'll talk about motivated sound in a minute uh, but let's just talk about a couple of things first of all um, C C100 uh, DSLR camera we want to take a microphone and we want to plug it in so we can bypass uh, and in the case of a DSLR the crappy little microphone that's built into the camera or with something like the C100 if we don't want to use the handle unit which has a stereo mic which isn't great for dialogue recording uh, good for wild sound and just sort of like a uh, you know just a scratch track but not great for recording dialogue uh, then we we have to do one of two things we can either plug right into the mic terminal which we also have in DSLR cameras or we can attach the handle unit and then plug in XLR based microphones so right now I actually don't have the handle unit on the C100 uh, I just have the Rode Video Mic Pro plugged into the mic terminal and I want to talk to you guys first a little bit about this microphone um, I have bought and tested and used a lot of different on-camera microphones and in fact one of the worst places to actually have a microphone is on camera uh, but it is sometimes especially when you're doing documentary style shooting the only place that you can put it because you are a single owner operator uh, or not a single owner operator but you are the only person operating there's that airplane uh, you're the only person operating the camera and so you want to have a small compact camera system uh, that can do basically everything so this little guy right here um, there's a few, a few reasons that I really like it. Well, the first one is that from an audio uh, quality standpoint, and you know, you're only as good as the weakest link in your chain. So if, for instance, you have, and we're gonna talk about motivated sound, uh, if you have really crappy preamps that are being used and you have the greatest microphone in the world, you're gonna be dealing with a lot of noise anyway. Um, in the case of the VideoMic Pro, it's a good quality, super cardioid uh, mic, and that's a basically a pickup pattern, a, a polar pattern. And what I'll do is I'll link to a little explanation of what those are. It's not a traditional shotgun, which has a very, very narrow pattern. It's a little bit of a broader pattern. So it's gonna pick up a little bit more on either side uh, of what it's you know basically pointed at. Uh, but it's still a pretty narrow pattern and uh, a really great choice for an on-camera mic, much, much better than using a stereo mic. Um, the VideoMic Pro actually has uh, an on, it also has a low cut filter, also called a high pass filter. Um, what that's doing is it's basically rolling off some of the lower frequencies, which can help eliminate things like handling noise. They can help with things like uh, low frequencies. Maybe somebody's mowing a lawn a few yards away and stuff like that. Um, and then really sort of the sell for me on this is this bottom switch here. And the bottom switch has three uh, positions. It has minus 10, it has zero, and it has plus 20. Uh, in the zero position, uh, basically the way I'm using it right now in the C100, I am finding a comfortable level internally on the camera system as long as it's pretty good preamps and the C100 has pretty good preamps, then I can find a comfortable recording uh, level and then get clean audio going into the camera system. 
if I have a situation where I'm recording things and let's say for instance uh, somebody is uh, starting up an engine or something like that that's going to have a loud noise then we could have and there it is I'm under that uh, flight pattern and again we'll talk about that in a second um, if for some reason somebody's starting up something or there's a loud noise and it doesn't matter how low you uh, basically turn down uh, your microphone you are still getting clipping where basically you're going above zero on the meter then there's an attenuator uh, or attenuation option on here where you can reduce um, the signal that's coming in here by 10 decibels it's a minus 10 decibels so attenuation is a great feature to have when you're using something like this and then the plus 20 this is a great advantage when you don't have something in between your microphones and your camera system especially if you have a camera system that has really bad preamps so for instance we're going to talk about that noise in a minute too um, if for instance you have a situation where you um, are using something like a 5D Mark II or Mark III, which has really bad preamps, then, um, then what you can do is you can actually boost the preamp inside of this microphone, the, the signal inside of here, and you can turn down the recording levels inside of your recording device. In fact, when I use this with a 5D Mark III, I use the plus 20 setting. I turn down the levels on manual to just one notch above zero. And, uh, and then they get very, very clean audio. So uh, really, really like this. Now let's talk about a few other things, some of the stuff that you guys can't see here and, but you're hearing right now um, in this episode. So first of all, motivated sound. If you look behind me, you can see that there are cars passing. Um, if we can see, and as long as the frame is decent, if we can see what's happening in the frame, then we're not bothered by it. But we cannot see those airplanes there. And so because we don't see that in the picture, it's distracting to the viewer. Um, either find a different location, figure out a way to get that in the shot. Um, in fact, on a clear day here, if you framed it up the right way, you could in fact see those planes coming uh, basically over the horizon in the flight pattern. Not something I'd necessarily want to do, but it's something to think about. And then also proximity of microphone to talent. Um, if you are going to be in a situation where you're going to have to put your microphone on the camera system, First of all, make sure it either has some sort of built-in shock mount system, and the Video Mic Pro does, though these things do come off, so I usually put a little piece of gaff tape on them, uh, or put the microphone in a shock mount, or get the uh, microphone away from the camera system, because it will, in fact, pick up some of those, uh, you know, those hand noises, the handling noise. Uh, the other thing is thinking about the focal length that you're shooting with, and, and how that relates to how far the camera is away from your subject. My sort of rule of thumb is I never want that microphone to be more than about an arm's length from where I am actually uh, in relationship to the camera when I'm shooting somebody. So right now I'm on a super 35 millimeter sensor, which is a crop sensor, a 1.5, uh, when I'm using you know full frame, uh, well, doesn't matter. We won't get into that subject. But basically, um, if we equate that, because we do sometimes because of DSLRs to a full frame camera, our field of view or our angle of view on a 28 millimeter lens is equivalent to about a 42 millimeter on a full frame camera. That would really be sort of a, an angle of view that we would associate with um, the way we kind of see the world. So I have a 28 on here right now and uh, the, the microphone is exactly about an arm's length away from me. And when I do that, I'm getting that mic close enough generally that I have good proximity. It's not perfect, but I have good proximity. Of course, now when I'm seeing these cars passing by, it's not that much of a big deal. Um, we're also hearing some little noises right here, and this is something to be uh, aware of. Right now, I have uh, like a little LED light here, and it has a little piece of diffusion on here, and unless you have uh, some sort of diffusion that is going to basically work, hold on, I'm just gonna set that stand down, is gonna work uh, and let that you know, basically wind pass through, and there is stuff that allows you to do that, then you may pick that up if it's too close to the microphone system. So another little gotcha that I set up that you guys can uh, be aware of. Um, other things, uh, I wanna be able to position that microphone. So if there's somebody who's shooting an interview or shooting something with a camera and the mic is on the actual camera system and they're six feet tall and the person that they're interviewing is five seven, you need to be able to adjust that. So generally what we'll do 
is we'll put this on the top of the camera system and then we'll actually attach the microphone to the ball mount and then the ball mount can be adjusted so if I'm taller than the subject I'm interviewing then I can adjust this so that the microphone is pointed downwards if the person is taller than me um, then I can do that but generally we don't want to shoot from below anyway so I would actually raise the camera operator up a little bit to be eye level or just above the subject matter. But something like this comes in uh, handy. Also one other application, if I take a little stand like this, like this nano stand, um, I can get this microphone away from the person if I put a ball mount on here and I can actually just attach this to a little light stand here. You guys can see that. I can attach the microphone to the actual ball mount. And then if I want to continue to use this microphone from my camera system, what I can do is I can get an extension cable or a lead and you can see here that I can position this any way I want. Very often times though it's not ideal when we're shooting stuff like this um, just for a quick stand-up video podcast will actually boom from below but it's on a stand and then what you would do is you would actually get an extension cable here and you would run your microphone. Let me just get that over here you guys can see that I think just in frame there. This right here is going to attach to this and then basically I'm going to undo this and I'm going to run this cable to my camera system so that way you're getting the microphone away from the camera you're getting it closer to the subject matter and you have a lot more freedom in terms of what focal lengths and what types of lenses you can use if you're using a zoom obviously it gives you a lot of freedom um, other things to have on there right now while it's not going to eliminate all of the noise I have a little dead cat on there so it's going to help with some of that wind noise. We did hear some. Sometimes if you get a big gust of wind, there's nothing you can really do about it unless you have a blimp uh, and you basically have that entire microphone system in an enclosure. And so, um, you know, again, there's not something you can do about that in every situation. And then of course, making sure you do have headphones so you can monitor and really see what situations you have. So the basic hit list, um, if it's gonna be on top of the camera, Make sure you choose a focal length that you can get the camera close enough to the subject so that the microphone is not really much more than about an arm's length away, away from the subject. Uh, make sure you put it on a ball mount so you can actually adjust um, which way that the microphone is actually pointing. That's very, very important. Usually bring a stand with you so that you can get that microphone away from the camera system and make sure you have an extension cable that can run to your DSLR or your camera system. Um, and then also having something like a dead cat. Think about motivated sound. So if we're seeing cars or things happen in the frame, then that's not a problem. But if I hear uh, a lot of power tools or something happening over there and I don't see that in the frame, that's going to be a problem. It doesn't mean that you want to point the camera in that direction. It may mean that you have to choose a different location because you're having problems with that location. I don't, of course, like the fact that I'm hearing airplanes overhead, but it's good for this episode because I get to talk about a lot of stuff. So um, I think that's a, a pretty good overview. Again, I've tested a lot of microphones. I would not recommend using stereo mics for recording dialogue. Uh, they're not very directional. The Rode uh, VideoMic Pro is a super cardioid microphone in terms of its pickup pattern and I'll link to a video so you guys can take a look at that. Um, it's not a shotgun pattern which is even narrower but it is a pretty narrow pattern uh, though it will pick up a little bit more on either side of the microphone in terms of ambient noise. That can be good in certain situations especially if you're doing something outside and let's say for instance you've got one person on this side of the frame and you've got somebody on this part uh, side of the frame. A shotgun may be a little bit too narrow in terms of its pattern and so um, this may actually work a little bit better in terms of having that two shot. Also for me when I'm doing instructional videos if I want to move a little bit and have a little bit of a freedom uh, to move around then a cardioid pickup may actually be better for me uh, you know a, a form of a cardioid pickup rather than having a shotgun pickup uh, so there you go um, a little bit more information for you guys on audio there'll be more of that going forward and this is not the microphone that I use on most of my stuff but it is the microphone that I recommend when you are running and gunning and you have to have something in the bag at all times. I also normally have a wireless mic system inside of the bag to use so that I can uh, plug that in. On a camera like the C100, I can actually just go ahead and put that receiver into that mic terminal and then also have the transmitter 
uh, on my talent and otherwise then it's XLR all the way um, a little audio one for you guys and I'll see you guys next time on Gearbox cut